Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. It's a great honor to represent BEREC, the Board of European Regulators for Electronic Communications. And I'm very happy to be in my, for the first time, in the FTTH Council Conference. In, this, in such a vibrant city like Warsaw. And uh, as we saw and we heard, with so many plans to develop, to deploy fiber network. And as chair of BEREC, I'd like to start by reflecting and ask you to reflect with me about the challenges we have for the next five years. I want to think about the future. And I want to tell you how at BEREC, we are working towards a future-proof regulation. If we think about the future of the electronic communication sector, the first thing we should do is to wear what I could call some broadband glasses. I mean, we need to look at the sector from the several perspectives. Because we are living in a high-speed changing world and as regulators, we have the obligation to look ahead, to make a forecast about our role in the future. We need to find the most efficient, proportionate, and least intrusive regulatory approaches. As you know, regulators are blamed by the sector, by stakeholders that say that we are very conservative, that we don't look sufficiently ahead. So I want to tell you that we want to change our reputation. We want to be forward-looking because, as Magdalena said, the future is now. And if we look at our market, well, some years ago, our task was much simpler. We had a single market with well-defined borders, and we know what to do we had to prevent former monopolies to, you know, dominate the market. We should ensure access. And the services were quite simple. Voice, text messages, some data. But today, the world changed. And the borders of our, the comfortable borders of our sector vanished. They are almost gone. And we, must, we feel a bit lost in this quite changing world. Because the convergence of sectors like IT, telecommunications and media has created a new digital ecosystem where traditional business models are no longer valid. Business models that are continuously changing and entering different sectors and of course this is bringing new challenges to operators that must adapt as well to this new ecosystem, but also for regulators, because we are pretty sure that new bottlenecks may arise. Within BEREC, I don't know if you are aware of this, but we are 28 members, so we are the national regulators from 28 EU state members and nine observers, working together on the development and sharing of regulatory best practices, aiming to implement the European Union framework, uh, regulatory framework and also to promote an effective single market. One of our main tasks is to advise and assist the European Commission in the, dev in the development of internal market as we have been doing recently in, are in areas like roaming, net neutrality, currently under discussion in the context of the Connected Continent Regulation. Because we also serve as a body for reflection, debate and device for the European Parliament, the Commission and the European Council in the field of electronic communications, BEREC feels that must take the lead and pave the way for the discussion on the required regulation for the next five years. So, let's look at some key issues while looking forward. 
When we talk about technology, market trends, and the future challenges for regulators, the so-called OTTs come to our minds. By the way, let me tell you that at Berec, we decided that OTTs don't exist anymore. We will call them CAPs, Content and Application Providers, because this is what they really are. And CAPs are part of the ecosystem, and they are part of the challenge for operators in the sector and also for regulators. But we need to think broader. We need to consider the explosion of machine to machine, the Internet of Things, and the Internet of Everything. We need to foresee the impact of bundled services, which in a couple of years will probably bundle a wide variety of services. We had three play, four play, fifth play, who knows how many we will have in the future. And this, of course, will bring new challenges for regulation. And what about network convergence and quality of service and all IP networks? All of these will contribute to shape the new digital ecosystem. And how will we deal with issues like privacy and data protection, network and information security, because we cannot close our eyes. We know that security is already the key word. Remember that cloud services are the future, that most of us use location-based services, that the annual IP traffic in 2016 will pass the zettabyte, and that the number of services connected to IP networks will be nearly twice as high as the global population in 2018, according to Cisco. So these numbers look quite impressive. But can we go further? This brings us to the demand side of the equation. We were talking, we heard Magdalena talking about demand. We know that people are hunger for um, fast speed broadband. However, in spite of this, we must be aware that somehow in the demand, we can define a kind of two tiers. We have the people that are hungry for um, fast speed, but on the other side, we have many people that um, the network deployment is, you know, some, uh, somehow um, contingent on the fact that part of the demand is limited because there is low affordability, accessibility, and digital literacy. And we cannot forget this. N network deployment is worthless if don't have a significant take up. And as you know, I come from a country, and I'm very proud of it, a country where, you know, we have like 85% of NGA coverage. And we have, um, in terms of fiber to the home, the coverage rate is 50%. But if you look at the take up, the take up is much lower than the European average. So we are, uh, together with Sweden, we are on top of the European countries in terms of uh, uh, FTTH uh, networks. However, the take, up, the take up is low, given to many, um, many elements, and some of them are connected to economic conditions, but also to digital literacy. You'll have people, like the young people that we just saw, that cannot live without uh, high-speed broadband, but we have some people that are quite happy with ADSL. And so they don't want to pay right now a premium price for uh, another type of connections. However, this is changing, and this is changing very fast. And the demand will take some time to develop, but you cannot, the demand cannot wait for the infrastructure to, to be built. So right now, we have the infrastructure, and we will wait for the demand.
And uh, we need to, to be sure that coverage and take up need to be part of an equation that we definitely need to balance. Without this balance, we do not solve the problem of incentives to invest. Demand for high-speed broadband is ultimately the main driver for investment. But the regulatory landscape is also changing in the European Union. There is a new commission and a new parliament. Some policies like Europe 2020 and the digital agenda will soon be reviewed. And the radio spectrum policy program and European Union data protection framework will also be revised. And all these will absolutely have an impact in the sector. But the most significant of these regulatory developments is definitely the review of the European regulatory framework. This is what we, within BEREC, consider a priority for 2015. And therefore, we want to be prepared to support the Commission on this crucial task. We expect an ambitious reflection and a disruptive one. Within BEREC, we are looking closely at the near future. We are studying the trends and we are analyzing the different scenarios. We are discussing with global stakeholders to fit and enrich our forecast. We consider that going for a minor changes for the framework review will not work. Because the world will be radically different from what it was in 2002 when the directive was written 2009, when it was revised, today, in 2015. The world will be much different in two years, in three years. Can you imagine five years? And we now must think about the regulation for the next five years. So we must try to understand how the world will change and what will be the role of regulators in this new ecosystem. The new regulatory framework will have to be ready to regulate, co-regulate, deregulate in the new digital ecosystem. And for this to happen, we need to push for a deeper change. As you can imagine, this is a big challenge for regulators that in general prefer to be rather conservative because it's safer. We know our space, our little world, and now we must challenge ourselves to uh, be forward-looking and try to, you know, to see what is the regulation that we will need in the future and not just to try to adapt the current regulation for the future. In short, Barrick's strategy for the next three years aims at think, taking full account of these technological and market trends as well as the coming regulatory landscape. We are in a turning point, and it's absolutely necessary for BEREC to foresee the evolution of the, ecos uh, of the ecosystem in the coming years. One of the BEREC's strategic pillars is to promote effective competition, and we cannot forget this. Why? Because in doing so, we are promoting efficient investment and innovation in new and enhanced infrastructures and services. Our understanding is that effective and sustainable competition is what drives efficient investment and not the other way around. Ladies and gentlemen, if we want to boost the European digital economy, if we want he health he education and cloud computing services if we dream with smart cities and interactivity if we want rich uh, audiovisual services and so on we cannot continue to think broadband what we do need is to focus on the deployment and take up of fast and ultra-fast broadband. 
As the conference motto suggests, let's all push for a ultra-fast, connected Europe. Thank you so much. <laughs>